Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not affiliated with the College Board. Today I want to discuss another use of the chi-squared test. It's a chi-squared goodness of fit test. The idea is you have some, you have categorical data, you have some prior belief about the distribution of that data, about the distribution and the null hypothesis is that your observed data fits your prior expectation and the alternative is <coughs> it does not fit so for example, suppose we were taking a telephone survey of 100 voters and we want to know whether it's representative in terms of voter registration. Suppose that we know in terms of voter registration that there are 46% Democrats, 38% Republicans, and 16% Independent. <coughs> so that's our prior distribution. So what we would expect if we were getting a perfectly representative sample, we would be getting, we would expect Out of 100, 46 Democrats, 38 Republicans, and 16 Independents. <coughs> Suppose what we got in our sample was 53 Democrats, 36 <coughs> Republicans, and 11 Independents. The question is, how far is that sample from what we'd expect? And again, we can do a chi-square. We can do O minus E squared over E, which would be, this is the observed. So this is the observed sample. So this is our O. Subtract E, so 53 minus 46, square it, divided by 46 and then do 36 minus 38, square it over 38, <coughs> and, so, and 11 minus 16 squared over 16, add them all up, and when you add them all up, you get a chi-squared variable, and then you look at the how that chi-squared variable uh, translates into a p-value by looking at what amounts to a chi-squared CDF from whatever value of chi-square to some very large number like 10,000 with the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of cells minus one. So in this case it would be two degrees of freedom. So once again we're not going to do all that stuff by hand. We'll do it in the calculator. There are a couple of ways to do this. Um, one would be to type each of these, calculate these expected numbers here. Um, so the expected number, so c compare the expected numbers, put them in one list, put the observed in another list, and then tell the calculator to do a chi-square goodness of fit test. Uh, that's perfectly fine. <coughs> what I'm going to do is my trick that I think saves me a little bit of of key punching or um, of working with the calculator and that's to create a, a just one matrix and do a regular chi-square test. And I explain how to do this uh, in another video but basically I'll take the expected numbers and blow them up by a huge amount so maybe I'll do 460,000 uh, 380,000 
160,000, put that into one row, put the actuals into another row, 53, 36, and 11, and that'll trick the calculator into doing a, uh, a chi-square goodness of fit test, even though I'm using the regular chi-square matrix test. So I'm going to do that. Hang on. Okay, so I've got my matrix, and now I'm going to uh, do the chi-square test. <coughs> okay, whoops, the chi-square test. Okay, so we get a chi-square of 2.73, a p-value, which is the important thing, of 0.255. So p-value equals 0.255. If we set a standard of 0.05, this is above that, so we would fail to reject, and we would say that this sample is close enough to the uh, to the expected that we're <coughs> that we're okay that we feel okay with this sample uh, suppose that we got a somewhat different sample suppose we got instead of 53 36 and 11 we get let's say 54 uh, 29 oh, and 17 let's see what that would do let's just try that Actually, let me try something a little more radical than that. Let's, instead of those, let's try uh, 57, 23, and that would leave 20. So 57, 23, and 20. Hang on. Okay, so that one, we got a chi-square of 9.6 and a p-value of 0 0.008. So with these numbers, chi-square was 9.6 and the p was equal to 0 0.008, and therefore we could reject the null hypothesis. So if we got a sample that looked like this, we'd say, hmm, maybe our sample isn't representative or looks like it probably isn't maybe we should have we should do our polling differently so that's um, how to do the chi-square goodness of fit test and I think that'll do it for our now I want to do sorry a couple things on the chi-square one is uh, when can you use and not use a chi-square test so some rules of thumb Okay, so be careful, careful if expected cell counts are low. So if you have, let's say, two cells with less than five expected counts you might want to be careful I think your textbook has uh, has some other definitions of, of rules of thumb but that's something to think about is that uh, your sample is small if expected cell counts in cells are small and uh, so you would <coughs> if you do have too many cells with low expected cell counts then you need to take a larger sample in order to safely use the chi-square. And now with that, I think I'll finish talking about the chi-square.